All right, something pretty cool has happened over the past three days. So for background, I have no experience using JavaScript to code. I have no experience formatting spreadsheets and eBooks or using Kindle's self-publishing platform. You know, it's called just like Kindle Publish Direct or something like that. No experience at all doing that. But over the past three days, I was able to, from scratch, create a book using only ChatGPT and Google and just free online resources. So I want to talk about what I did uh, and just a lot of the struggles and the path and everything because I think that if you are trying to figure out ways to make money with the free services that exist online, maybe it's Amazon or it's ChatGPT or it's Google or any of this stuff, you don't have to do what I do. And in fact, you shouldn't do what I do because this is just like an exploratory project. But I think the way that I lay these thoughts down and the patterns you begin to see are going to be helpful to you as an entrepreneur because that's what most of entrepreneurship is, is just seeing patterns and uh, making money off them or solving problems and just stuff like that. So let's scan back three days, right? Uh, I'm trying to sell chat GPT. And by that, I mean I'm trying to have it output words and I can sell those words. The rave right now is like chat GPT bots and da 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 as a service. And I don't want to do that because I don't think it's that interesting. Uh, I think the market's flooded. And I think that it's just not, I don't, I'm not a, you know, a coder, right? I, I want to learn those skills. But at this point, what I am is a marketer and somebody who can sell things. And I understand SEO and I understand Amazon and uh, how to solve problems. But understanding like all of the intricacies of language and how to utilize and how to get the you know the best bang for your buck and find efficiencies and and systems based on servers and how it's gonna be portrayed to the customer is not my not my cup of tea. What can I output and then sell? So my initial thought was like building blueprints. Can I get like a, a blueprint for uh, how to create a a picnic table in your backyard? And when you you say write me. The, a manual for that. It does give you an outline of the directions, but what I thought was totally necessary was like some kind of image, like a PDF scans of what it looks like, some visual component, just, you know, however that is. Uh, and I could not create that using any artificial intelligence bot that I know of. Um, could I have gone out and bought it or, pay, or paid someone to make this for me? A hundred percent, but that kind of defeats the goal that I was trying to accomplish and having it all be just on my computer um, fed to me more or less or I feed it and it makes an output is really how we're going because it doesn't just tell you what to do you have to tell it what to do uh, and then you do what it tells you what to do and it's, it's kind of an iterative process like that so uh, a building blueprint right now is out of the question um, experimented with some coloring book pages. I had a, an idea to make a, a coloring book all about beavers, just because I think beavers are cool and they're interesting animals. That didn't work either because I was having an issue having the lines be consistent uh, width. It really bothered me that in some parts of the, um, the, the beaver, it would have very thin outlined lines in a coloring book type scheme, and in some parts it'd be very thick. And I was talking to my brother, and I think that we could actually create a, a macro in like Illustrator to standardize line width, but that's a, a topic for a totally different video. Then I said, okay, how about creative writing prompts? I can ask ChatGPT to give me X amount of creative writing prompts, and if I can package those in a way that is sellable, I can make some money. Because then I'm getting this basic product and I can rely on my skills as somebody who has product development and marketing experience and Amazon experience and all that kind of fun stuff to make money off of what is otherwise, you know, I'm sure they could go on their own chat, BG, chat GPT excursion and, and spend 25 minutes getting their own prompts. But I think at a low price point, like for two ninety nine, I think that's a buy for people. Um, and I think it's useful and I think that I, I can make it gimmicky, right? And some of you are probably rolling your eyes. But that's what marketing is, it's just gimmicks. So look at bottled water. Bottled water is a gimmick. It's a, a multi-billion dollar gimmick industry. Almost everyone who buys bottled water has access to tap water, but in their minds they believe that, oh, it's not as pure, it doesn't taste the same, or all this stuff, and what they're just buying into is gimmicks, okay? So I'm just talking as colloquially as possible. Don't read into my language because I'm trying to convey points, not like make some big statement here. Um, I can find a way to make this gimmicky. How do I do that? Well, I wanna do horror creative writing prompts. I'll do 666, which is 
you know, for people who are into numerology, it's a bad number. And if you're into numerology, don't, please do not irritate me with your beliefs. Uh, for people who are not into that stuff, but find these kind of like little um, relics of the past, funny and entertaining and clever and kind of like campy to an extent, then you know who I'm going for. I'm going for somebody who sees this, you know, all the other creative writing prompt books are like a thousand and one, you know, da 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 da. They're just very basic and sterile. Um, and I don't think somebody who is going towards uh, uh, the, the hobby or career or whatever you want to call it, their passion of writing horror mo stories, movies, novellas, uh, flash fiction, whatever, uh, I don't think that they like sterile things. Okay, so you get what I'm going with this now. So I, I go to chat GPT, I say, write me a hundred um, horror movie prompts. I didn't say horror movie, I said horror creative writing. But again, the details of the prompts don't really matter because you're gonna be talking with chat GPT and you're gonna be iterating on different prompts and each different prompt is gonna give you um, a different output. And so my first whatever prompt, because it, it truncates its response to you after like 2,000 characters or 4,000 characters, after a character limit, it truncates your response. And so I got about 35 bullet points and they all begin with the letter A. So like, a uh, town, da ba da ba da has a ghost in it. A uh, ghost vessel washes up on shore and there's a hidden pancake inside. Just like things like that. Those are not examples of prompts. I'm just saying words right now. But it was very monotonous. Um, there was no spontaneity to it. And I feel like if you're trying to get a book of creative writing prompts, you want it to be spontaneous. And so I took those 25 or 35 or however many it was, and then I altered my prompt to say, uh, don't begin with letter A. And so then it doesn't begin with letter A. It begins with the word you, Y-O-U. You walk into a village, but about ba there's a witch there. You are on a high school field trip and your teacher gets... Uh, cis spirit manifested by George Washington. Just like stuff like that. And again, very repetitious. This is what this AI stuff does is it iterates over and over and over again. It's not trying to be creative, but if you give it creative prompts, it can, you know, kind of create an artificial intelligence. Oh, wow, look at that. So then I began saying, using a different letter of the alphabet, write me 25 creative writing prompts with an emphasis on horror, science fiction you know, whatever it was. It was always horror, but sometimes it'd be Lovecraftian horror. Sometimes it would be science fiction horror. Sometimes it would be body horror. Sometimes it would be the horror of mundane life. Just things like that. And by telling it to use a different letter at the beginning of the prompt every single time, it added a whole lot of variety to the way they were phrased, uh, the flow they had, and just looking at it, it all looked different. We have our spreadsheet full of all the prompts. They've been randomized, but I'm reading through them and I realize that, oh, there's actually a lot of things that are thematically duplicates. So they're not duplicates on the line level, they're different words, but if one's about a ship that washes up shore with, with a ghost captain and one's about a boat that washes up shore with a spirit captain, those are essentially the same. So then what I did is I went through and I copy and pasted all of those in like segments of 10, I think, because you can't just dump that much uh, text in a chat GPT, segments of 10 or, or eight or 15, I had all the text on there and I said, go back through my past previous 10 messages and tell me how many of these bullet points are thematically duplicates. Give me a list of those. And then after I got about 300 of those spit out, the final result was 710. I don't know the exact numbers. I didn't keep track of it, but the final result was 710. So I guess scoot back and add on 30 minutes to my initial total effort of this because there was a, about a thousand that were initially put out. I used control F to find them and delete them. This was by far the most time consuming aspect um, of the entire thing. What I would do next time is create a separate script where I can upload those 300 that are bad. And again, this takes like four or five iterations of the question being asked to get this list of 300 that are bad. And then I would just automatically remove those out of the cell without having to do control F and delete them manually. That's what I'll do next time. Again, I'll still a learning experience. So now I've got my randomized list of thematically unique creative writing prompts. What do I do? Because I can't just put that into an ebook and sell it as a list. That'd be ridiculous. It'd be a wall of text. It would be formatted terribly. It wouldn't look good. And this is where it got really, really difficult because I don't have a background in JavaScript. And what I used was JavaScript to create the formatted ebook. Uh, I went to ChatGPT and I said, uh, format this so there are four on a page with five spaces beneath 
and have each prompt be have an equidistant spacing between it. So basically I want it to be like prompt, 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 small space beneath it. I thought that looked fine. Uh, our amount of white space looks a little bit professional, kind of put together. Um, and I wrote this and I get this program back from ChatGPT and it just doesn't work. It can't find the file. I don't understand these things. I talk to people, I go on Stack Overflow, I go on Reddit and everyone's saying, yeah, this should work. I don't know what's going on. Um, this is when it occurs to me that ChatGPT is old enough where maybe there's some kind of UI change between the time that ChatGPT uh, came out and now on Google Sheets where the info I'm getting doesn't work anymore. So I go over to Bing because Bing has ChatGPT4, which is the most recent um, version of ChatGPT. It has the ability to browse the web. Uh, and I thought, okay, maybe if I ask this the same question, it can spit out some code that I can then use to, um, to, to work. And sure enough, it did. Uh, it gave me the correct series of events to perform to get the desired outcome. It took me knowing how to ask it and where to ask it to get that. So it's not like I just pressed a button and got this stuff, but by understanding what I want uh, and how to ask it, I was able to get a program that was concise, simple to use. It would create a document and then on every page of the document, it would take four of my creative writing prompts and equidistantly copy and paste them with a space for five spaces at the bottom of the page. Awesome. My book is essentially formatted. Um, I put a title page. I put a brief note at the beginning of the book on how to use this, basically just saying like, go to a page randomly, find one of the prompts and write it. Just like four or five lines. Uh, and then I exported the file as a docx file, which is like Microsoft Word. Google Docs can do that. I could have potentially uploaded the docx file as the ebook, but Amazon recommends that you use, it's called like a KDF file. It's basically the format that Kindle prefers. And I don't know if it's because the data is more compressed. I have no idea, I didn't look into it. Uh, but to create that file, you have to download Kindle Create, which is a free program on PC and Mac. I downloaded that. I uploaded my docx file to that. I checked to make sure that it previewed out fine on iPhones and Kindles and tablets. Uh, and then I exported my docx file, which I had uploaded to Kindle Create as a KDF file or KPF. It's one of the two, but as, as Kindle's native ebook format for files. It took like 15 seconds to export <laughs> after about three days of working. And then suddenly the ebook is finished. I go to my Kindle account. I upload the book. I use Kindle's cover designer to make a thematically relevant cover. It's just kind of surreal and red and spooky looking and says 666 horror creative writing prompts in big white lettering. And then it has my name in the top right corner. I think it looks fine. Uh, I wrote a very basic description. I put the keywords as horror writing, creative writing, writing prompts, stuff like that that's relevant. Uh, I put it in the educational writing category it's you know there's not a category for writing prompts but I tried to make it as if it was a book that would totally be used for educational purposes uh, and then I hit publish uh, priced it at three bucks because that's the lowest price you can put it at that you know there's there's a, a royalty structure to Kindle that I don't really understand that well so I'm gonna skip that for now but um, I priced it as low as I could essentially and I'm running a campaign for the next five days starting tomorrow where it's free for anybody to download. It was reviewed in about 12 hours and then it was live for download. Everything was done, the ASIN was done, the ISBN was automatically assigned to it by Amazon for the potential physical version because Kindle eBooks don't have to have ISBNs. Um, all this stuff is taken care of by Amazon, you know, for free. I'm going to have to pay um, a, ch a commission to them whenever it sells, but having it up there, there's no fee to make this. And so using Google, using ChatGPT, using Microsoft Edge, using just everything on the internet that's a free resource to me, I was able to, from start to finish, create an ebook that I think will provide value to people, that I think I'll maybe make a couple sales off of at least, but more importantly, I now not only have a script that will create these books at scale so I can do romance, creative writing prompts, science fiction, creative writing prompts, uh, you know, anything that is just the 
copy and pasting of individual lines onto a page that don't have to have a narrative structure. I can now create those with ChatGPT or any other AI writing tool for that matter. I can put them into a spreadsheet, I can randomize it, and I can make a document that has them formatted in a way that is more appealing to the eye than just a giant wall of text. It took me a few days to learn this, but I think it's pretty cool. If you like this stuff, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see my journey doing more of this, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.